Sometimes when I hear what Tony Khan says or see what he tweets, I always think back to Rocky II and Apollo Creed's manager begging with him, let it go, let it go. It really feels like sometimes Tony respectfully just needs to learn when to let shit fucking go. Because when he doesn't, it just comes across so poorly. It does. And it's one thing to make a bad decision. It's another thing still when you have several days after making your initial decision to think about it, be able to process, receive feedback on it, read the room, if you will. It's an entire another level of stubborn stupidity to have that several days see the almost universe, I don't want to say condemnation, but push back and discouragement and kind of vile, visceral reaction to saying you're going to play the footage from All In at Wembley between Jungle Jack Perry and CM Punk and see all of that, even like your boy Uncle Dave saying he doesn't think this is a good idea. And then you still are insisting you're going to fucking do it anyways. What's the end game here? What does AEW benefit in the long run here? Now look, I understand based off of what CM Punk was saying in that interview with Ariel Hawani, it's hard to let it go. Let it go, especially if what CM Punk said wasn't entirely true. If it was like a combination of some facts, some truths, some this, and some flat out distortion or lies, it could be really, really hard to let that shit go. But that's the thing. Tony Khan is allowing himself to get hooked by CM Punk. And at some point in time, you have to learn how to let shit roll off your back. You can't always act like such an entitled baby, frankly. I mean, this is the type of behavior we're talking about here. Even if you love and respect Tony Khan, you have to admit, this is not a good look for him. Stop spinning it and always having to defend him every time because that shit's not helping. It's creating a cocoon of dumb fuckery around him where he feels like there aren't consequences and repercussions for really, really bad decisions. And again, I want to emphasize, this is a really, really bad decision. Just because CM Punk is talking about you, that does not require a response. This can very easily be a, I don't care. I have turned the other cheek type of moment. But Tony Khan just can't fucking let it Go! Let it go! Where do you win here? It's one thing if he would have done this right after All In last year and said, you know, when he made the announcement to f- that CM Punk was gone, play the clip, if it was that incriminating or bad looking for CM Punk, and say, this, folks, is why he's no longer part of the AEW family. He doesn't fit our culture. He doesn't fit our brand, our values. You know, the type of corporate spin shit you would expect. And at that point in time, it wouldn't go across overwhelmingly positive, but it wouldn't be overwhelmingly negative like the reaction to this is. That should tell you something. Oftentimes, it's not about when you do it or what you do, it's when you do it, how you do it, like that type of stuff matters. And waiting, what, seven plus months later to do this on the heels of Punk's interview, on the heels of WrestleMania 40 weekend, looks like a pathetically petty play. It does. 
And I'm just not sure if Tony Khan lacks the type of people around him to straight up tell him, this is stupid, don't do this. If he lacks the people with the fortitude and the guts to do it, or if he's surrounded by some man children that think this is cute and funny and all of this and da 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 da. It's not. Because what's going to happen? Okay, you've got people talking about your product and your show. Is that a good thing in this case? Maybe you say it is because controversy creates cash and any attention is good attention. But what would you even do to capitalize on this? So you show the footage Wednesday night on Dynamite, and then what? And then where do you fucking go? Let's say it shows CM Punk being a jackass and an asshole and starting a fight with Jack Perry. Well, a lot of people assume that's what already happened anyways. Now what you're doing is you're giving free television time to another company's top star or one of their top stars that used to be with you that no longer is. All of that, so that way you can have absolutely no payoff to it whatsoever. It'd be one thing if CM Punk was coming back to AEW right now. It would be one thing if he was still under contract with the company, but he's not. Why in the fuck would you do this? There is no payoff here. And let's say it shows CM Punk being able to easily rough up Jack Perry. Not only are you giving free airtime to somebody else's top talent, you're making your own talent look like a bitch. And if you're showing anything about the confrontation between yourself and CM Punk, how is that going to make you look anything other than pathetic and weak? Even if it comes back and it says that CM Punk's version of events was total bullshit and Jack Perry got in his face and Jack Perry fucked him up, even then it's like, why did you wait so long to release that? You still have CM Punk on the other brand. You're still not going to get any payoff from this. Like when you inject real life life shit into your booking, into your programming, that's fantastic because real draws real money. The problem here again is how do you do that when one of the main antagonists, protagonists, depending upon your perspective, participants, isn't there? You contractually can't do it. And now you're trying to pop a rating by getting a couple hundred thousand more people maybe to get curious and you're going to maybe try and sit there and hook them in and make them wait all night to see this shit. And then what? You're going to devote more television time to it by talking about it yourself or having the Bucks of Suck talk about this or a Kenny Omega talk about this or a Jack Perry talk about this. Like, where the fuck are you going? Like, this is a representation of the type of shit that made me turn away from watching AEW. I don't bother watching this product in this company right now, and I really don't see any reason to do so. Because there's more focus on trying to win internet brownie points and try to pop your own Mark fan base than there is trying to run a business and trying to grow your brand and improve your talent, improve your production, and make more money. Like, holy shit. And to those that are going to say, well, this is hypocritical, dude, because you grew up in the Attitude Era where these type of petty shots happened all the time. They certainly did. And we should learn from the lessons of the past. As funny as it is to go back and watch the Billionaire Ted skits from late 95, early 96, what did that get the WWF at the time? It made them look pathetic. It made them look scared. It was a boost to WCW. When WCW was sitting there and giving away the results of Raw and Eric Bischoff was challenging Vince McMahon to a fight, like you were drawing attention to somebody else and making it seem like, well, if you're so concerned and focused on them, fans should be too. It's not good, especially again, if you're doing it Talking about another product, another promotion. Why the hell would you do that? Why would you sit there and give somebody else your precious airtime? It doesn't make any damn business sense whatsoever. And anybody trying to spin it otherwise knows they're clowning. You got to stop this. We got to call shit real when it's real stupid. 
There's no real positive here. There's no real win. There's no real long-term benefit. Is this going to make me tune in to watch Dynamite on Wednesday? Fuck no. It makes me less likely to want to watch the product now or any time in the near future. Because if your priorities are there and you're looking back, and that's at the end of the day what he's doing, right? Tony Khan is looking backwards. At a time especially where the interest has kind of waned a bit in his company and his product, and there's questions about his booking and his leadership, he needs to be looking forward. That's what a CEO should be doing. That's what a leader should be doing. And it's his case, as the guy in charge of AEW, he needs to be looking 6, 12, 18, 24, 36 months out. Not 6, 9 months fucking back. When you've got a CEO starting to do that, when you've got a head guy doing that, you know shit's going awry. It's a terrible look. And if this is how he's running his business, it makes you wonder how sound the business fundamentals are for AEW. But it seems like no matter how much you speak about this from a logical standpoint of saying, this is really stupid, don't do this. Hey, even your biggest defenders are saying this is questionable to really dumb and a really bad idea, don't fucking do it. He just wants to freaking do it. It's like the woman that everybody around her tells her the dude is no fucking good. He's trash. He's garbage. He's a dog. He does this and he does that. And she's like, I love him anyways. You know, at some point in time, you got to let a bitch find out. And in this case, you're just going to have to let Tony Khan find out how bad of an idea this really is. There are so many risky elements here in a bad standpoint and so little to gain from a positive. And I think about that trade-off in terms of television time. You think about it as an opportunity cost. What could you be doing instead of what you are actually doing? What are you expecting to get in terms of a yield or a return for airing this footage and rehashing shit from seven, eight months ago instead of using that television time, that precious television time, even though you have quite a bit of it, it's still very precious and very important every week. Instead of featuring your top talent, and putting them in interesting and compelling situations that make people want to pay attention. They make them want to get emotionally invested. It almost makes it feel like for AEW, it's an acknowledgement from Tony Khan that the top two draws for his company are the freaking Big Bang Theory and CM Punk. Not a good place to be. Give us reasons to give a shit about your current product and the people that are there, not the people that aren't. There's no positive outcome to come from this. Even if you said initially, uh, this pushes back on what CM Punk says and proves him to be bullshit. Well, then that's just going to validate what a lot of people think about CM Punk. He's full of shit, right? He's a crybaby and all this. That doesn't help AEW. And the fact that they would put up with this behavior repeatedly will be a reminder of Tony Khan let too much shit go on because he was a poor leader. And if Jack Perry did get punked out and he did get roughed up in a quick fashion by CM Punk, it doesn't make him look good either. And if there's any footage of Tony Khan looking like a scaredy cat staring down CM Punk, now the top guy in the company is going to look like a punk ass. And you just can't have that. So I hope between now and tomorrow night on Dynamite, somebody gets in Tony Khan's ears and says, stop the stupidity. Stop this shit. Pivot. Do some type of, if you must, if you must, do some type of parody skit. You shouldn't even do that. You shouldn't let it fucking go. Let it go! Because all signs point to disaster and everybody damn good and well knows it apparently, except Tony Khan and the Young Bucks. Oh, Tony, I beg you, let it go!